Hi there, I'm Cameron Richard. I work for ServiceNow in the Application Development Department. Hi, I'm Nigel Bell and I'm one of Cameron's colleagues. Today we're going to have a quick follow-up on the previous SLA schedules video we did in the beginning of Feb. Um, we're going to go over three different points that we find customers ask questions about quite often. Um, the first one being some fields that have been on sort of leftovers from the escalation engine on task. Yes. Now, do you want to give us a, an explanation of what those are? Sure. So prior to both the 2010 and the 2011 SLA engine, there was an engine called, uh, basically called the escalation engine. Uh, and there were some fields around that, that that were used by that engine. And if we just bring up um, an instant form. So we've added the three fields in question to this form. Um, they can be shown here. They are escalation, made SLA, and SLA due. Uh, and the only thing that populates them is that old escalation engine. Uh, typically on most customer instances, that old engine will be disabled, and so nothing will be populating those fields out of the box. Okay, so basically customers can ignore escalation, made SLA, and SLA due because they have no use in the SLA engine as it stands today. Exactly, uh, and, they, and, they sh and they should be ignored. They, they have no relevance to your SLA definitions that you set up now, which create task SLA records, uh, that they have no relevance to those records at all. Right, <clears throat> perfect. The second point was also addressed in the, in the previous video, mm -hmm. all around business elapsed time and how confusing that can be with regards to the fact that business elapsed time is only calculated off of the schedule defined on an SLA. So, yep. and we know that when, when customers see one day or two days, they sometimes think if that's the actual business days, but it isn't. And it's, that's, that's the amount of days calculated through the schedule. Exactly. Is there something we can do to actually represent that, maybe in, a, in an easier, less confusing way? There is, there is a quick fix customers can make to, um, and this applies to all duration fields, but if we just go to an SLA definition itself, and if we open up an existing SLA definition, so here's the duration field where you specify uh, the number of hours that your SLA is gonna run for. Um, now, like you said, the confusion comes where perhaps days, uh, a customer might think that the days field is um, scheduled days, whereas in fact, it's, it's gonna be three times 24 hours. Um, so to, to avoid that confusion, what you can do is, uh, if we just go into the configure dictionary for that duration field, um, and if you make sure you're on the advanced view, you, what you will see is this attributes field where you can add in certain attributes to change the way this duration field is displayed. And the attribute you need to add is one called max underscore unit. Um, there are various options you can add to this uh, to control the, the, the elements you see for that duration field. So in this case, we want to reduce it to only show hours. So if we now just update that, you can see that the hour, the days field, um, the days element of the duration has disappeared and you now just enter hours, minutes and seconds. And that just uh, takes away some of that confusion around the duration. To use an example, if we had, if we originally saw one day in the duration field, now we would see 24 hours. Exactly. And if the customer had used a five days a week, say eight hours a day schedule, they would therefore, if they saw 24 hours, they would know that it's quite easy, it's three lots of eight hour increments. Exactly. So they could, they could work that out and say, ah, oh, that is th actual three business days, as opposed to the original duration showing one day. Exactly, it, just, it, right. makes, it makes you think uh, in terms of hours rather than days, and then that takes away some of that confusion around whether it's scheduled days or um, 24 hour days. Perfect. So the last point we wanted to get onto was the issue that some customers do want the business elapsed time to be populated all the time because we don't populate it every time we only populate it if the schedule has been defined for an SLA definition right that's correct what can we do to get around that if, if it is required that we need that field populated all the so time? so this form we have open already this SLA definition is a good example it has no schedule uh, so if you were going to look at a task SLA record for that has been created because of this SLA definition the business fields will not be populated at all. Yeah. To, to, there is a way to force that to happen, and that's to create a 24 by seven schedule. So if we just go to the schedules module, and we're gonna create a new one, it's gonna be a very straightforward schedule. We can just, as an example here, call it 24 by seven. 
And if we just save that, uh, the important thing is to remember you must add a schedule entry to the schedule. If you don't, it, it's effectively a schedule with no time in it at all. So we just need to create a single schedule entry, which again we can call 24 by 7. Tick the all day option and change repeats to be daily. And then if you just submit that. And a quick test just to make sure the schedule is defined correctly. If you do show schedule, you can see that all the days are populated with all, this, all the amount of time. Now what we can do is go back to our SA definition where we want to ensure that business elapsed time is populated. And now we can just set the schedule to be our 24 by 7 schedule. And now when that, is, that task SLA records are created for that SLA definition, both actual fields and business fields will be populated. Great. When we talk about making sure the schedule we have to find has entries in it, what does the SLA engine do if there aren't any entries for the defined schedule? So if there aren't any entries for the defined schedule, it will still calculate based on <laughs> the 24 hour clock. Um, but only because what it's done is to walk through the schedule looking for time. Um, but we have a cutoff point on, the, on that because obviously we don't want to spend forever, you know, looking 20, yeah. 30 years in the future for time. Um, uh, the schedule calculation gets to a point where it says, okay, I haven't found any time and just drops back to a 24 by 7 calculation anyway. But this is much more inefficient. Perfect. Great. That's, that rounds up our explanation on these little bits and pieces. Hopefully you found that interesting and at least a bit more informative on top of what we did uh, previously in the month. Thanks so much. Thanks. <clears throat>